Hi guys, this video is focused on decision making. In this video, I'm going to discuss about two decision making aspect. One is choosing between two cost options or incentive options and the other is choosing between two production options which gives you the same amount of sales or profit. Hi guys, I'm the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you'll find videos covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications, including life-changing business ideas and hacks. Guys, this video is very important. Number one, this video will help you obviously to ace your exams. Number two, if you are a business person, if you have a business, this video is for you. This video will help you to take critical management decisions which will save you a lot of money so let's jump into the discussion both decision making areas i'm explaining you with the help of two different numerical examples in the very first one there is one company which has 50 employees and it's a car selling company and each car is sold for 40000 us dollars and at the moment they pay 8 percent commission on sales so a car if it is sold for forty thousand dollars a salesperson get a commission of eight percent and at the moment they have 50 salespeople. now the company is considering a new scheme where every salesperson will get a fixed salary of one thousand plus a commission of six percent on sales they make the company is trying to decide should they continue giving 8% commission on total sales or should they give 1000 fixed salary to all the 50 employees plus if they make any sales they should get 6% on sales as well. Apparently it looks very simple but think from the viewpoint of a business person. If that is your car showroom how would you decide should you only pay commissions or should you pay a fixed salary plus commission. Now one important thing here to note is you need to decide on a particular level of sales which means a sales level at which you are indifferent whether you're paying only commissions or you're paying a fixed salary plus commissions. So let's solve this question. While solving I will emphasize on some important aspects which will help you to you know save a lot of money if you are encountered with such decisions. In order to find a sales level at which management is indifferent whether to pay only commissions or commission plus salary, you have to form two equations. The very first equation is the current scheme at which only 8% commission is given. So 8% uh, means 0.08 and let's say we are talking about the sales level as S. You equate this with the new scheme where all 50 employees will get a salary of 1000 US dollars which means 50 employees will get a salary of 1000 US dollars plus they will get a 6% commission on sales which is 0.06 sales we don't know. Now if I solve this this is 0.08 S which is equal to 50,000 plus 0.06 s all right so 0.06 when it comes here this will be 0.08 s minus 0.06 s which is equal to 50,000 this will be 0.02 s which is 50,000 and we'll get the amount of sales which is 50,000 this 0.02 is multiplying by s when it goes on the other side of the equal sign it will divide 0.02 so s will be 2.5 million now ladies and gentlemen this is very very important this sales level of 2.5 million is the indifference level of sales at which whether you pay only commission of 8% or you pay fixed salary plus commission of 6% the company's cost is the same but what you need to understand is if you have a sales level of greater than 2.5 million then you should be using the new scheme. What is the new scheme? This is the new scheme. This is the new scheme. This one is the old. Why? Because if you are having more sales greater than 2.5 million, your variable cost, this commission is your variable cost, is just 6%. 
so you are better off paying 6% commission on a higher sales rather than 8% commission on a higher sales but if your sales is less than 2.5 million then it is better that you pay a higher commission and no fixed salary so to prove this point let's assume what if the sales are more than 2.5 million and let's see what happens if you use the old incentive scheme and the new incentive scheme so we are assuming if sales are more than 2.5 million let's say sales are 5 million if sales are 5 million under the old scheme we are paying only 8% commission so 8% of 5 million this would be 400,000 so if sales are more than 2.5 million which is 5 million your total commission will be 400,000 but if you follow the new scheme which is recommended because the sales is more than 2.5 million what will be your total cost you will be paying 1,000 salary to 50 employees which will be 50,000 plus you will be paying a 6% commission on 500,000 which will be 30,000 which will be 300,000 sorry so when you add this your total incentive which you are paying to the workers is 350 now you decide if the sales is more than 2.5 million which is 500,000 where are you saving you are saving in the new scheme that's what I said new scheme says if you are new that's what it is meant new scheme is only applicable and viable if your sales are more than 2.5 million why you will be paying only 350,000 if you use old scheme you'll be paying 400,000 now let's verify this further what if your sales are just 1 million which is less than 2.5 million so under the old scheme you will be paying flat 8% of 1 million that would be 80,000 but if you use the new scheme where you're paying 50 employees a salary of 1000 which is 50,000 and you'll be paying a 6% commission on 1 million which will be 60,000 so total you'll end up paying 110,000 so if the sales are 1 million which is less than this Obviously, you would like to pay 80,000, not 110. This is what I told you. Once you find the point of indifference, the sales level of indifference, it is easier for you to decide which incentive scheme should be used, the old or the new. So the companies, what they can do is they can forecast their sales. Once they know that their forecasted sales is, let's say, 5 million or 1.5 million, once they know this is our indifference level, our forecasted sales are more, you can simply change the incentive scheme and save a lot. I hope this is understood. The next decision here is when we have two different products. So we are trying to find out how many units of each product to sell or what should be the total sales for each product at which we are indifferent towards our cost or in other words what would be the total level of sales for each product both in terms of units and amount which will give us the same profit so for this kind of circumstance you need to understand the shortcut of profit I have created a video on CVP analysis break-even analysis you can watch this video in your spare time where I have explained you how to calculate shortcut of profit for now please understand the shortcut of profit is actually profit and loss is equal to total contribution minus fixed cost so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two equations one for product A and one for product B so for product A see this a contribution is 45 so 45 I don't know the number of units for A I'm writing A so 45 into number of units will give me total contribution minus fixed cost which is 37,500 
and I will equate it with the profit equation for B. The contribution is 35 for one unit into the number of units of B. I don't know how many units I'm writing B minus the fixed cost, which is 30,000. This is my profit equation. I'm writing it equation one. The other is I have to create a revenue equation. Revenue means number of units into selling price. So this is 80. So for product A, the revenue function is 80A. A means the number of units, which is equal to what is the selling price of this? 68. So revenue is selling price into the number of units. So 68 into the number of units of B, I don't know. I'm writing B. So now what I will do is I will find the value, for example, 80A is equal to 68B. So A will be 68B divided by 80. So A will be 0.85B. This value of B I can put in this equation, which is 45A minus 37,500 is equal to 35B minus 30,000. So if I put the value of A, which is this, so this is 45 into 0.85 B minus 37,500 is equal to 35 B minus 30,000. So 45 into 0.85 will give me 38.25 B. Okay. And this 35V, when it comes here, it will be minus 35V. Okay. And you have here minus 37. When it goes there, it will be minus 30. And when it goes there, it will be plus 37. 1500. So 38 minus 35 would be 38.25 minus 35 will give you 3.25B which is equal to 7,500 plus minus minus sign of the greater. So B will be 7,500 divided by 3.25. So B is equal to 7,500 divided by 3.25. B is coming to 2308 units. So if we have the quantity of B, I can calculate the sales revenue for B. Sales revenue or the amount of sales. 68B. So 68 multiplied by 2308 units. 2308. So this would give me the total sales of B. Once I have the value of B, I can put it here to get the value of A. So I'm just doing it here. 80A is equal to 68B. When B is 2308, so 80A is equal to 156,944. So A will be 156,944 divided by 80. A will be 1962 units. So ladies and gentlemen, if you'll notice, we said at what amount of total sales, both quantity and amount. So quantity we got for A, 1962 units. So if you're talking about A, we're talking about 1962 units. And for B, we are talking about 2308. And the sales would be almost the same for this. Why? Because if I, if I put this 1962 here, 80A. 80A means 80 multiplied by 1962 units of A. So when you multiply, you get something very close to this. So you're getting 156960. See 156944960. The difference is only due to decimal approximations. So guys, please look at what magical equations we have formed. Guys, look at the magical findings. There are two products A and B, though their selling price is different, their variable cost is different, their fixed cost is different, but we are able to work out the amount of sales, 
whether it be A or B, if the total sales is 156, 944, for A and B, the profit will be the same. Or if we sell 2308 units of B and 1962 units of A, we will still get the same sales and profit. So think from a business person's perspective. You have two different products and now you know how much of each product though their selling price and variable cost and fixed cost is different will get you the same profit or at what level of sales for both the products will you get the same profit so if you want you can verify the totals what you do is you just calculate total sales 80 into a this is the number of units 68 into b is the number of units you get total sales you minus the variable cost you minus the fixed cost in the end you will see you're getting the same profit now the last thing is very interesting sometimes you would like to know what quantity for a and b and the quantity has to be same let's say if 500 units of a so then 500 units of b what single quantity of a and b should be sold to get the same profit so if you want to see that the equation is like this i have less space please excuse me I'm just writing it here. Contribution 45. I don't know the quantity. I'm writing Q. Minus fixed cost 37,500 is equal to what about B? 35 is the contribution. I don't know the quantity. My uh, Q minus 30,000. So if you solve this, how it looks like 45 minus 35 you will get 10 Q is equal to 37 will go there you will let fit 7500 so your Q will be 750 units now what does this show you the 750 units shows you if you sell 750 units of A and B you will get the same profit or a loss so guys, if you have any questions relating to decision making areas, especially for point of indifference, leave a comment. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and show that you value my work. If you like this video, please share with all your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.